A document viewer agent is an important piece in a group-wise system. It is responsible for converting attached documents for indexing so the contents of those documents can be searched. The post office agent can provide that functionality, but it can add a significant load. A better option is to have at least one DVA on a non-post office server. If you have a large system, you may want to configure two or three. To start, I'll check my admin console to see if I have any DVAs already configured. The overview display doesn't show DVAs, so I'll need to click on the system menu, then select document viewer agent. Here I can see that I do have a DVA, and by the name of it, I can see it is associated with my PO1 post office. By clicking on it, I can view the properties and confirm that the address does indeed match my post office. This is less than ideal because one server will be doing double duty, the PO functions as well as the added load of the DVA. So if I don't have one, or if I want to add a second one to my system, how do I do it? Looking at my system, I can see that I have a secondary domain configured for disaster recovery, but notice that there is no post office associated with this domain. The server that hosts this MTA is a great option for my new DVA. If I open a console to that server and run the rcgrpwise status command, I verify that the GW admin service is running along with the MTA and the GUIA. Next, I'll run the gwsc-l command to list the groupwise agent's services already set up on this server. Now I'll install the DVA service with a gwsc-i-dva command. Once complete, I'll run the status command again to show that the service has been installed. Note that it's not yet running. I can start it with the rcgrpy start gwdva command. And another status command should show it running. Good. That completes the first half of this project. For the second half, I'll go back to my admin console and create the DVA object to go along with this service that we just installed. In the admin console, click on System, then Document Viewer Agent, then click New. I'm going to give it a name here and include DR in the name to remind myself that it is on my disaster recovery domain server. In the address field, simply specify the IP address or the DNS host name of the server where the DVA service was installed. Since I am running SSL for my entire system, I'll check this box. We have now completed the setup of the DVA. All that remains is to take advantage of it. I'm going to open my POA object, then click on the Document Viewer tab down here at the end of the list. As you can see, my original DVA is listed here already. I can add the new one by clicking Add right here, then select the one we just created from the drop-down list. However, this isn't the configuration I want, so I'm going to remove both and set them up in a different order. I want the new DVA to be in the first position since it is hosted on a non-post office server. Then I'll add the original DVA back to the list in second place. Now the POA will use this DVA as its first choice. If for some reason this first DVA is unavailable, the POA will automatically switch over to the other one as a backup, ensuring continued DVA functionality. On a large system with several POAs, you could configure a third DVA, then configure your POAs to distribute the load evenly amongst those DVAs. Thanks for watching. We hope you find this information helpful. Thank mm -hmm. you.